QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021, receive payment and make deposit. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. Here we are in the Get Great Guitars homepage. We currently have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the view dropdown and selecting the open windows list. This time we're going to be entering the receive payment and the record deposit. We've seen both of these in the past. We're going to record them at the same time this time, however. So the receive payment is going to be the next thing that we do after creating the invoice. The invoice increasing the receivable and uh, sales. So increasing receivables and now we're going to be collecting on it. I'm going to select the invoice so we can see some of the open invoices going back. We have one open for the uh, Music Stuff Store. We have one open for Eric Music. We have one for Jones Guitars and one for Anderson Guitars. If I go prior to that, the, this invoice has been paid. And you can see that by the indication here, of course, that it has been paid. Let's close this back out then. So now the accounts receivable is, has been increased, and now we're expecting to receive payment in the mail. The best way that I think to visualize this would be that we send out the invoice, and then we imagine the check coming in the mail. We open the mail, we see the check in it. That's not the only form of payment that you can, you can receive, but I think from a visual standpoint, that makes, you know, that's the easiest to see. So now we're going to get the payment. So we're going to say, let's open up the payment. And this is going to be from Anderson Guitars. So I'm going to type in Anderson, Anderson tab. And then we see our invoice down below. If I double click on that invoice, it will then open up the invoice. So you can actually see the invoice if you so choose. Closing this back out. We're then going to check that off. As I do so, it'll populate the amount up top. I'm going to assume it's a check that we have received. If you want to give more detail on the check, you can add the check number. This is not our check that we are writing. This is a check that we are receiving from Anderson, our customer, for a sale that we made in the past. What's going to be the transaction related to this? Well, it's a customer payment or sales receipt type of form. That means that cash is going to go up in some way, shape, or form, typically. The default, as we can see now, because now we uncheck that preference up top, and just remember where that preference is. If you go to the Edit drop-down, Preferences, Payments, Second tab, if you have this checked, you won't see any option. You'll just It'll just automatically go to undeposited funds. We have unchecked it now. And that's why we see this preference drop down saying it's going to go to undeposited funds there. Or you can choose something other than that, such as a checking account. So there we have that. The other side is going to be decreasing the accounts receivable. We've, we're getting paid on it. So it's going to decrease the accounts receivable. Let's say save and close. And let's just check that out real quick. I'm going to go to the home tab company let's go to the balance sheet first changing the dates up top to the customer reports i'm going to change the dates from 010121 to 123121 january through december 2021 selecting that and we see then that the undeposited fund has reappeared here with that 420 in it closing this back out the other side of it uh, is going to the accounts receivable double clicking on that we see the accounts receivable uh, going down by that 420 and let's change the date I'm going to take the date past this uh, 20 so sorry about the date thing here I'm just going to change it so we have an ordering of our date as we go here let's increase the date to the uh, 22nd so the 22nd on the date and then I'm going to say save and close and yes please change that and now we have it down at the bottom which is where I'd, I'd rather see it. We also know that the receivables is going to be changed. So if I go to the reports drop down and I go to the customer receivables and I go to the receivable uh, balance detail report. And this was for Anderson Guitars. There's the 420 that they paid. That's obviously linked to this invoice up top. Let's go back to the home tab in the open windows. We see that we have this one thing indicating that we have a deposit. But before we do that, let's, let's add another receive payment. So we're going to receive payment again. And this time from Eric Music. So we're going to go to Eric Music. We're imagining we got a check in the mail from Eric Music here. And check in the mail matches this check down here uh, of the 26250. So that's a big one. We want to make sure to deposit that in the bank immediately. And I'm going to check this off. I'm going to bring this date up this time. Try to get it done at the same time to the 21st. Let's bring it up to the 21st. And so what? We're, there we have it. What's this going to do? It's going to increase the undeposited funds because it's a customer payment and that's where the default is going. Other side is going to be decreasing the accounts receivable specifically tied to the customer, Eric Music. Let's go ahead and save and close that and check it out. Go into the balance sheet. 
we see the undeposited funds the undeposited funds has now been increased by that amount once again and uh that's going to be the 26 let's change the date to bring it past the 22nd there so let's go back into this here i'm going to change the date a little bit again let's bring it to the 23rd so it's the latest thing that has happened this is the latest and newest and greatest so we're going to say save and close save and close and there there it is so then i'm going to close this back out and the other side is going to be going to the accounts receivable so the accounts receivable, there it is on the accounts receivable, decreasing there. We also know that the accounts receivable is now down to 8,561, which should be found in the accounts receivable detail, 8,561.70 cents. We see the payment here for Eric Music, Music at the 26,250. Now let's go ahead and deposit that. So I'm going to go back to the home page. So now these both went into undeposited funds, and we can see that indication by the little two here in the deposits. I want to deposit both of those. So now we're imagining that we're going to the bank with this money, the checks that we have that we've now received, and we're going to deposit them at one time, one lump sum in the bank so that they, we imagine that they're going to be on the bank statement in one lump sum. And that's, that's how we want to report it in our books as well so that it'll match up. Note that if you got those two checks, like in practice, if you, ju if you just got two checks and then you basically, you know, used an app to take a picture of the check or something like that and you deposited them separately and you expect them to be on the bank statement as separate deposits, then, then you're going to want to deposit them in your books separately, right? So the, 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 the whole point of using the undeposited funds is to try to deposit them in the same grouping as they will be in, in the bank statement. And that's going to be really important with cash checks. It, it just depends how many checks you get and how you group those checks. If you're grouping them in, in basically uh, one deposit, if you use credit cards, you're going to have a similar issue because the credit card company might deposit your credit cards in a, in a grouped type of fashion. And you're going to want to try to match up that grouping on your side of things as well again, so you can reconcile the bank accounts. So I'm going to put them in there together, imagining that we're going to group them together and therefore see them on the bank statement as we will when we do the bank reconciliation in one lump sum. So we're going to check both of these items off. They, they pop up in this little pop-up because th that means they're in undeposited funds. So I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to change the date. I'll try to get it right this time. I'm going to keep it at the 23rd. And what's this deposit screen going to do? It's going to increase the checking account now. And it's going to decrease the undeposited funds. So let's go ahead and save and close. And then go to the balance sheet and say, all right, now the checking account has been increased or should have been by the 26,670. That looks good. And then uh, let's close. And if I double click on it, of course, that'll take me to the deposit screen. That looks good. Okay, closing this back out. The other side is going to go into undeposited funds. Double clicking in on the, un or it's gone now because it's, it's zeroed out. <laughs> So let's, I usually go to the trial balance now, and I often go to the trial balance more than, more than the financial statement sometimes because it's, uh, if I'm doing a lot of transactions. So I think it's a useful report, even though it's down here and under accounting and taxes, as if, you know, you wouldn't use it if you're not an accountant or something, if you're just doing your own books or something, but I would use it anyways. It's because it has debits and credits that they say that, but still. Even if you don't know the debits and credits, it, look how nice and clean it is. It's like all in one little spot here. But in any case, we have our undeposited funds. If we just double click the undeposited funds, then we, we see our, our transaction. It goes down to zero. It's done so with two, uh, the two transactions as of that date. If I click on either one of them, it will then show us the detail, the 26, uh, 670 total and the two, the two individual transactions so we can see the detail in the undeposited funds. Closing these items back out, going back to the balance sheet. Also note that uh, both of those transactions, the receive payment and the recording of deposit, nothing happened to the income statement, the timing statement. Why? Because something happened to the timing statement in this whole flow when we recorded the invoice, because on an accrual basis, that's when we actually did the work. The rest of this process is just simply us converting assets, right? It went from an accounts receivable to undeposited funds like a cash type of account, another asset, and then it went from there to cash itself or the checking account. So they're just switching asset accounts. The sale took place here. That's when the revenue or income statement or temporary type of account, which is the income statement accounts, increased.
So let's take a look at what we have. What we have now, if we look at the balance sheet, this is what we have thus far. If you're following along. And uh, I'm not going to show the income statement because we didn't change it, but I will show the trial balance. Here's what we got with the trial balance. So you can check those numbers as well.